Today on Let's Talk Drinks, I want to show you how to use the Boston Shaker. Hi everybody, so I thought I'd start doing a few bartender tips or techniques on how to use some of the uh, cocktail equipment for home or if you're looking at becoming a bartender. The Boston Shaker is probably one of the hardest shakers to use. They are just a two piece. You can get two tin style, you can get one that's a glass and a tin. And sometimes it's a little bit hard to use, so I thought I'd show you how to do this. So, first thing I'm going to do is just pour, and I'm just gonna use water because it's just absolutely for demonstration purposes. So I've added some uh, ingredient there to the shaker. I always use the smaller part of the shaker uh, to pour my ingredients into. And if I'm using a Boston shaker that has a glass and a tin, I always use the glass because it's really good, especially whilst learning to use a glass style Boston because you can see the ingredients that are in there. So if you've forgotten something, for example, if you're making a drink with Naduri and it's not green, you know that you've sort of missed that ingredient. So all we've done is we've added our fake booze, then some ice. Okay, so this is the way that I explain it to a lot of my students that I've trained over the years in hospitality classes. So I want you to think uh, when you're looking at your shaker as looking at a clock, all right? And as you can imagine, it's 12 o'clock at the top, three o'clock to the side, six o'clock, and then nine. So what I always say is I grab the larger part of the tin and the part that I have touching, okay? So as you can see, the metal doesn't touch all the way around the shaker, and it can be the same if it's a glass or a tin on tin. I always have it so that the part that touches each side is at three o'clock. I hope that makes sense. So 12, probably your way would be 12, three, six, and nine. Does that make sense? We have it there. And then I hold the bottom of the shaker so that when we hit it, it doesn't go flying out and hit a customer or your friends. And with the palm of your hand, I want you to smack it probably a six out of 10, okay? If you smack it so too hard, what can happen is it's really hard to pull it apart. If you don't smack it hard enough, the shaker can come apart while you're shaking. Trust me, you don't want that to happen. I had a problem once where um, it came apart and it flew all over the bar and the back bar and it just made a massive mess. So what I do is the part, it's sitting at three o'clock, it's touching. I spin it so that it's at 12 o'clock, okay? Then with both hands, I pick up the shaker and flip it towards myself so that where it's touching each other is facing me. So technically that makes it six o'clock, okay? I then shake either with a hand on top or bottom. Never shake like this, never shake like that because it will come apart. I wrap my hands around both and most importantly, after obviously hitting it on hard enough, is never shake forwards towards your customer or your friends. I learned that the hard way. I made a Cosmopolitan once. I was shaking, trying to impress the uh, pretty young lady that was in front of me. It did come apart and cranberry juice went down a white dress. She was not happy, okay? So I always turn away to the customer. However, if you have people around you, be uh, mindful that you're not gonna hit them as well. I had one of my staff hit another guy uh, many years ago when I had a bar called Cloud9 and he actually split his whole uh, eyebrow open. So turning side on and then holding both, giving it a really good shake. Okay, let's go. Now it doesn't matter if you shake like this or shake like this, as long as you're getting that motion and that dilution and aeration, okay? You can normally tell if you're using just tin that it's getting really, really cold to the point that you can't hold it anymore, that it's ready. Okay, so I bring it back forward to me. It's still the join, where they're joining up together is facing me. Then, with my right hand holding it with the left, what I do is with the palm of my hand, I hit it again at the three o'clock mark. What that does is, by hitting it below here, it flexes and it should pop it open, okay? and it comes apart, all right? That is the hardest part that I ever had in making cocktails, was trying to open up a Boston shaker. So once again, with the palm, the meaty part of your palm here, holding onto it, give it a hit, see, and it'll split. If you've got a brand new shaker, it will take a few turns. 
I find that a lot of people do it this way. It's sort of hard because it's moving around. You want to try to position yourself to hold that shaker, hit it, and pop. And that's pretty much how you use the Boston shaker. I'm going to show you now how quickly just to strain it into a glass. Putting your strainer and your fine strainer and pouring through. That's it guys, how to use the Boston shaker. I've got a bunch of other videos coming up on how to uh, pour and stuff like that. So like, subscribe, hit that bell notification and we'll see you again soon on Let's Talk Drinks.